this is the first lecture of particle physics and the name that has been given to it is p1a at the very beginning we'll discuss high energy interaction in this lecture at the very outset let me elaborate a bit about the topic which is particle physics particle physics means as the name implies study of particles also in this branch of physics we classify particles the nature and properties of particles are studied and the interactions which exist between the particles are addressed in particle physics the aim is to determine to describe the building blocks of matter and to interpret them in a meaningful way we also find out the laws that govern various interactions that are present in nature and through this study the nature of universe can be obtained as the name implies particle physics the particle represents a discrete unit it corresponds to a bundle or a packet it represents an indivisible unit that is what we mean by a particle now matter is made up of molecules and molecule is made up of atoms atoms are build up with particles like electron proton neutron and let me mention who discovered them at the very initial stage of this lecture electron was discovered by j j thomson in 1897 during his study of cathode rays while the proton which exists in a nucleus was discovered by rutherford in 1920 through his experiments on bombarding nitrogen atoms with helium discovery of proton is credited to rutherford though goldstein had works on it chadwick in 1932 discovered a neutron through his analysis of data relating to scattering problem this table shows the dimension of these three particles the radius of electron is 2.8 fermi proton has a radius of 0.8 fermi while neutron has a radius of 0.8 fermi 2 and the masses are for electron it is 9.1 10 to the power -31 kg which comes out to be 0.511 mev per c square proton is a heavy particle almost 2000 times heavier than electron and it is 1.67 into 10 to the power minus 27 kg which when converted to energy units through einstein's famous equation e equal to mc square turns out to be 938 mev per c square neutron is a bit heavier than proton slightly heavier than proton here we have 1.67 and here we have 1.675 and neutron has a mass of 939 mev per c square here 1 fermi is equal to 10 raised to the power minus 15 meters 1 mev here we have mev 1 mev is 10 to the power 6 electron volt where 1 electron volt is 1.6 10 to the power minus 19 joule 
the matter is built with particles and particles which build the matter which are the building blocks of matter are very small in size again particle of size say d d representing dimension of the particle can be compared with its corresponding the bry wavelength using this formula so if lambda p represents the bry wavelength of a particle which is moving with momentum p then lambda p is given by h by p now we can compare the dimension of the particle with the associated the bry wavelength if it so happens that d is of the order of or less than lambda p then it is very evident that lambda p will manifest so in such situation where lambda p cannot be ignored where lambda p is greater than or of the order of dimension of the particle size of the particle then wave property will dominate the particle property gets suppressed so this is the idea of quantum mechanics and it was initiated by the broy now here h represents planck's constant of value 6.626 10 to the power minus 34 joule second let us list down particle properties by particle properties we mean mass momentum energy so a quantity which is endowed with these properties a particle a system which has a mass a momentum energy is definitely a particle and not something else such as a wave on the other hand if a system has a wavelength has a frequency then it is definitely not a particle but a wave these are classical ideas and here nu represents linear frequency and omega represents angular frequency and they are related by this equation omega equal to 2 pi nu omega represents radian per second and nu represents cycle per second and the factor 2 pi is there because a circle or a cycle is of 2 pi radians and on this side how are e and m related e and m are related by einstein's famous equation e equal to mc square where c is the speed of light in free space 3 into 10 to the power 8 meter per second now coming back to the particle properties and wave properties which are possessed by system it follows that if it so happens that the dimension of the system is smaller than its associated de Broglie wavelength then wave properties will manifest as in the case of small particles the particle property and wave property are related by the Broglie hypothesis or the Broglie relation which is p equal to h by lambda this holds for particles here p represents particle property and lambda represents wave property and they are interconnected through this equation in particle physics our aim is to study particles which particles the particles which make up a matter which are constituents of matter or a particles which are created or generated in an experiment involving collision or rather collision experiments so the idea is to investigate or probe the particles to study their nature to study the interactions they follow and so on so forth to study particles we need some investigating agency which we call a probe and this probe or investigating agency with which 
we can study particles can be an electromagnetic radiation or a wave and let us re-mention that we are trying to investigate particles and these particles are of very small size. In other words, their dimension is very close to zero. They are indeed of very small dimension. So the question arises is which wave or which electromagnetic radiation is to be used? What should be the nature of the investigating agency? And the nature of the investigating agency is that its wavelength, the wave or electromagnetic radiation with which we will investigate the particles should be comparable to the dimension of the particle. So this is the requirement that we set. Let us elaborate this point. Now since the dimension of the system that is particle to be investigated is very close to zero, very small. So the dimension of the investigating agency has also to be very small, should also be very small. Here lambda represents wavelength of the probe, probe means investigating agency. Let us consider three cases. In the first case, we have shown the investigating wavelength which is extremely short in comparison to the dimension of the system. So lambda is much much less than d. Here it is clear that lambda is too small to probe such a large structure. It will fail to record minute details of the object having dimension d too high, too large. So it is like trying to find the amount of water in a river with a small bucket which is simply absurd or impossible. So lambda is too small to probe such a large object. Let us now focus attention to the second case where lambda is large and the object to be investigated is very small. Now this lambda obviously will miss every nook and corner that is the finer details of the object. It is like trying to kill a mosquito using the huge firepower of a cannon. So this is also a situation that doesn't generate any hope we cannot proceed with this sort of mismatch. So these are mismatches while if lambda which is the wavelength of the investigating wave or radiation is of comparable dimension to the particle or system to be investigated. So this is the case of lambda of the order of d then it is a perfect match. Here lambda is uh, lambda being comparable to the size or extension of the object. This lambda will be able to faithfully probe the object and in full confidence. It will be probed or investigated in its entirety and fully and nothing will be missed or left unnoticed. So, Lambda of the order of D is, so to say, a made-for-each-other situation. Now, property of wave or the electromagnetic radiation or the photon with which the radiation is built, that is, we are speaking of the probe, is, as given by Einstein, E equal to H nu. And if we substitute nu equal to c by lambda, 
then we end up with this relation here nu is the frequency linear frequency lambda is the wavelength of the probe or the electromagnetic wave that is the photon and let us recall an equation of special theory of relativity which is this one which involves which holds for a particle of mass rest mass m0 but since we are referring to a photon photon has mass rest mass 0 it has a kinetic mass but its rest mass is 0 implying that it cannot be brought to rest and therefore if you put m0 equal to 0 this equation simplifies to equal to pc from here we get the value of momentum of photon namely p equal to e by c and if you substitute e equal to h nu here then we end up with p equal to h nu by c and finally for nu by c or rather c by nu let us put lambda to end up with p equal to h by lambda now this relation holds for photon so let us make a gist of the properties of the investigating ener energy agency the wave and the properties are e equal to hc by lambda and p equal to h by lambda now what is the requirement that is set on the wave so that it can probe the particle properly the size of the particle or dimension of the particle as mentioned is very small it tends to zero and therefore it is essentially needed that the probe should also have an extension comparable to d and therefore it also tends to zero so we need short wavelength now from this equation it follows that if lambda tends to zero if lambda tends to zero then e tends to infinity and p tends to infinity as well so we need high energy we need high momentum in particle physics to investigate particles for a study of particles we need short wavelength high energy and high momentum now how is that high energy created high energy is created with the help of particle accelerators so what we have emphasized in this lecture is that particle physics involves high energy interactions the reasons behind it has been described here in this lecture we came across certain scientists famous people jj thompson Rutherford, Chadwick, Planck, De Broglie and Einstein. In lecture number P1b, we'll try to say a few things about these famous people and we'll discuss certain problems relating to the topic of today. Let me end up with this quote which was given by Henry Ford who was the founder of Ford Motor Company and was an American industrialist and business magnet. Most people spend more time and energy going around problems than in trying to solve them. But we have to remember that in physics, we have to do this to check whether our theories are right. And we have no fear at all in rejecting a theory if it fails to have a solution to our problem. Thank you.